so for the ATM example we had, we already had uh, uh, an idea. We did uh, use case analysis in one of the videos. This is where we identified a couple of personas and what the ATM work with and as an outside. Um, so we're reflecting that here will maybe change as we go. Um, when you do modeling, you, as you move between modeling tools uh, in different phases of the development with the discussion, you may find out that the discussion will bring up things that you may have missed before. So, um, uh, and this is, we model to, to have the conversation. Uh, we need to discuss this, we collaborate. Uh, so uh, conversation is really uh, at the heart of why we're doing modeling, not to document, it's a way of um, collaboration to get there, making sure that we all have the same understanding of what we're thinking to build, what we're building, um, and maybe sometimes as, as, as a discovery, what we have making sure that everybody understand how the existing system work. Some, some people have been with the team for a longer time. Some people are new to the team. This is a very effective discovery tool um, to start with. Um, so for the ATM, we had uh, the ATM user. And this would be the system. Let's color code it so at least I know. This is the ATM system we're building. You'd have the actors around that. We had um, that was uh, admin, ATM operator. And typically in the diagram, you would have some description of, of this person interest in the system. Just a little bit, not not much. And you would call this um, relation. So this one would be a view accounts and transactions. For the operator would be um, check hardware reports. refill money, something like that. Um, we also had a timer that's so we call it external timer or audit timer or something. This is the name of the persona and what's the interest here, why this exists. And this will be um, generate reports, maybe audit reports, or daily reports, or regular reports, something like that. Uh, we also had, uh, and this is again in the use case, we had different type of actors to indicate the, that a timer, an external timer, or a timer that happens inside the system is kind of an actor, and how you put that in the use case. Um, so if you review the use case uh, video, it would be very similar as far as actors. I'm just trying to stay with what. Uh, so this is a, a, a system, a robot that has, um, and maybe we will call it other systems for now. I mean, this is not the actual name. And you give it what kind of access or how this will benefit from here. That relation we'll call it Maybe these systems control, turn off and on features, like disable this ATM, something happening and they wanna dis discommission the ATM for now. Um, maybe some security breach. We also had transaction management system and you can add what, what this is actually doing. And here you would have um, perform transaction, or ex we call it exec transaction. I think we had some back end here too. Mm -hmm. 
that that was the banking um and we kind of called the okay this this one would be send the emails to the customers so back end customer in the banking there is a know your customer KYC you have information about the customer make sure that he's a real person and you know IDs verification and all that part of it you see in the NL maybe not maybe this is actually a group of systems uh, but in the context diagram we're focused here we want to see what's outside and you see this how how this relates to the use case analysis we found out the actors around it and how they use the systems we had primary actors that initiate action into the systems and we had secondary actors that the system would use to perform to serve the primary actor the primary actor can be human a system or or just something um on a, runs on a timely basis a, a nightly batch or whatever so this is context and the, the way we call this okay so this is system context diagram for ATM, you can have date, version, and time, if you will. Sometimes you do this in a in a visio or some electronic form. Um, I prefer doing this, and if if possible, on, on a board so you'd have it. But uh, have this for uh, for uh, to communicate is is uh, so. If electronic, you'd have some sort of version. So in case you want to maintain that for whatever reason, um, see what was before or what's not. But usually it's a, it's a collaboration and a current state or maybe a desired future state. So in case, so you add the metadata you want here as a context. So that was the context diagram. If I can spell this right. And then we we'll take this into the next level, which was a container diagram. You would notice that this will take the ATM system bigger. All these would become small outside and we would care about what are the containers in the systems. And all these relations that was connected to this black box, that will be more of a white box in the next level, will reach in to a certain container. And if, if this is a new system, it's a good discussion to have how we're gonna break this into the second level of containers. Um, if it's an existing existing system, you already know that, and it's more of a reflection of it, and it helps you with the discovery. So we'll move to the next level, and uh, I will start um, uh, drawing the relations and the box, and then work in the container. So I will pause the video uh, until I do want you to see me doing this again, but just to save your time. I will come back with the box, the relations, and we'll start working in the containers inside the system.